All right, what's going on guys? I have not made a video in a very long time. It's been a minute. Um, first of all, some things have changed. Here's Winston. He's uh, replaced Bean Dog, um, also known as Dog Trot. So this is Dog Trot Marks 2. Mark 2, sorry. Um, I'm doing this as like a, a live off the cuff video. I'm just doing it through OBS. I haven't made a video in a, a very long time. And uh, you guys seem to really enjoy the Royal Marines Commando video that I made last, how to join the Commando Regiment. So um, we're going to do this. So it's a Commando Regiment. We're a Royal Marines Commando, sorry. Um, we're doing it off the cuff. There's no preparation. I'm just doing it for OBS. Um, it takes quite a bit to just make a video. And I put myself off for so long. So we're going to do this. This is episode one, the Paris Men of War. We're going to treat this as how to join a parachute regiment. Um, it, things might have changed. If, uh, if you know that things have changed in selection and the uh, uh, training process, then let me know. Also, um, you know, full disclosure, I did serve in the armed forces. I am an ex-squaddy, uh, uh, ex-British Army, sorry. And um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not ex-Paris. I'm ex-Renf. All right, I'm ex-Remi. I'm nothing special. But this is just my spin, my taking it, and my personal opinion. And uh, Mr. YouTube Monetization Man, this is a reaction video. This is all training. There's no real war conflict footage, whatever. This is safe for people to watch. Um, I will try and keep the swearing to a minimum. So let's uh, let's go for it. So this is uh, Paris Men of War Part One. ITV, come on in. Oh, lovely. These men are here to learn how to kill. Oh, man. Why do you look so scared, Joe? That's got to come out, hasn't it? I remember, I remember all this sort of shit when I joined. So I I actually got dropped off at um, the barracks in Wiltshire. Oh, Sir John Moore Barracks, Winchester ATFC. I joined at 16. Um, and I got dropped off by my mum and dad. And I went into this, like, hall. And everyone was in there. It's like a big gymnasium. Everyone's doing out the paperwork. You had to go to a guy with a, a clipboard and a list. He was like telling you which uh, company you were going to belong to. I was 14 company. And uh, my first training sergeant or corporal or NCO that I met was called Sergeant Brady. And she was this big Scottish woman and she was real fucking scary. And um, my mum was like, uh, oh, should I give you some extra money? And she was like, you won't be needing that, laddie. <laughs> yeah. They're still teenagers and have never lived away from home. Day one, so when they start, as soon as they come off the train, as soon as their name's been ticked off on that sheet, they're ours, they're with us, yeah, we've got them. I think some of this, some of this has got to be dialed up for camera. We're about to begin the Parachute Regiment's Elite 28-week recruitment course. It's the most weeks. brutal test of body and mind in the British Oh, Army. the Lander Nod, I recognise that place. No! Back area, carry that. Attack it! The men that trained them have been to war. They know what it takes to become a para. Come on, come on. Stay with it. Oh, oh, oh. Stay with it, Joe. You're right. Don't See, that's why... That's why I always preferred military exercise and PT and stuff in the winter. Because at least you got to cool down. And it sounds bad, but it's easier to warm up than it is to cool off. Okay? It's always on this shit. I'm pissed off at myself that I'm not getting it through here. It's like it's going in there and coming out there. Boys will need to become soldiers. Capable of taking a life. The Paris. Our bread and butter is soldiering in the field, closing with the enemy, and killing him. To finally earn the regiment's maroon beret. I'm going to like stop interjecting because I feel like this video would take two hours, and all these bits in this intro will probably come apparent throughout the video so if you guys like this and you want another part you want a part two make sure you get me at least seven likes will be a test of character and courage only a handful will succeed here we go 20, 20 uh... It's a very empty, quiet train station. Right, Joe, grab all your kit, make sure you don't leave anything behind. Joe, behind me. for those who don't know, uh, the powers refer to their like recruits as Joes because you're just Joe Blogs until you've got the beret. I might be wrong with that, but I'm pretty sure you're nobody until you've got your beret. Winston, would you like to get down? You can come back if you want. Let me know. Um, 
yeah, Joes are their recruits, their trainees, and uh, until that point, when they have got their maroon beret, they're Joes. Get on the coach and get ourselves to Carrick. So I was based in Carrick with my first uh, posting, but. I only went onto their barracks every now and then to pick up kit or, or whatever else, but um, what a shithole. <laughs> yeah, with your, your nice fancy shoes on, it's slipping on everything. The moment I'm given that rifle and on that plane jumping out into a war torn country, I'm not going to be able to, you know, call my mum and ask her to give me a hug. You know, it's about just, you know, growing a pet and getting the job done. Good attitude to have. Yeah, I appreciate now. You don't know how to Okay, so everyone now turn and face that way. We used to call it a tactical bimble. What are you going to do? You're going to walk, swing your arms across your body. The first day in training is like a massive shock of capture. I think now they do a look at life type course where you learn basics of how to march and stuff. When I did mine, I had a, um, a weekend at Litchfield where I had a PFA and everything. And... Um, which is your mile and a half and a gym session and a fitness and you had to lift weights and fucking whatever else. And um, they didn't teach us how to march, but they taught us how, taught us how to uh, like walk in step. You have no idea what's going on. They'll probably instantly regret their decision, but I suppose that's almost how we want them to be. At least they've got a, a fairly modern accommodation block. My mum's from like the 50s, exactly 40s and being calm and collected on the day. We need them to feel that stress. Imagine us now as a big family. Look at all the hair. Left and right here, behind I'll be here, gone in a second. Covers. You look after them like they're your own family. Your section commanders, yeah, they're your uncles that you look up to and they will steer you in the right directions. Me, I'm your dad, yeah, if you've got any problems, yeah, you come and see me. At the same time, discipline issues, yeah, I'm your dad, I'm going to punish you. Does everyone understand that? Yes, we are a family, we work So I had a, uh, like I said before, a, a troop sergeant called uh, Sergeant Brady. Um, she was never nice once, she just fucking hated us so much. Together, we get results. You've got there the best corporals in the parachute regiment. Feel privileged and feel a bit of pride that they're getting to teach He needs you. a fucking shave, scrotty teach, bastard. on board. The only people that will fail you now is yourselves. Everything you do now, you put maximum effort into it. Another thing which I haven't mentioned yet, you are now Joes. It doesn't matter what there background you you've come from, whether you've been the lowest of the low or you've been well educated, it does not matter. You are all equal as men, right? Haircuts, some of you are looking like one direction at the moment, yeah? Every man here will have a haircut tonight. We're all brothers, we're all part of the same thing. You're gonna lose that hair, you're all gonna be in one boat. See, I had mine cut my before I went, Joe, having that fresh new and I had short hair and everything else, but this new person they made me have a haircut again anyway. I don't think they took anything off it. Because I could tell you now, you know, if I was to pass out, I'll be a complete different person. You know, I'll just look at my old self and say, yeah, I'm done with you. You know, you could go back in the closet and then I could be showing off this new person I am. I'm unhappy. Right, what I want you to do is get out in the corridor. Let's go, hurry up. See, this is actually uh, the training staff, the DS, are actually being pretty nice at this Joe point. Stands for joined on enlistment. Oh, there you go. Um, because they don't want to scare people off too early because you have a statutory right of withdrawal or whatever after 28 days. So if they scare you off, then you're gone. You, you don't come back. So um, they try and be a little bit nice in the first few weeks once you sign on again to do your like confirmation then all shit breaks loose. The 40 will all be called Joe for as long as they're in the course. It's weird, if you want to join the Paras, the recruits there's are being stripped all of different kinds identity. of people. They're all different. Everyone's different. Same with any uh, unit in the military. Joe. But we had a barbershop. Joe is me. I we had a barbershop that we went to on camp and we had to pay a fiver each to get the, our hairs done. Uh, whereas these are just doing it in the corridor, which is... Uh, Makes sense. I am Joe. Posh boy. We're all Joe. Um, that's me. That's all I'm ever going to be for the next seven months. Joe. That's us. 
nothing more, nothing less. It is definitely a little bit weird getting your identity stripped away from you. I'm known as Chad, I am Chad. And then you come here and then you're like, I'm not Chad. Dudley. My Ugh. parents always told me that I should find my groove in life. I should never Is he South anybody. African or posh? I was a very nervous, very worried child, so I'd worry about what I wanted to be. And I used to be, I wanted to be a paleontologist, game ranger. A paleontologist. And then my father gave me the idea of the army. And I thought, hmm. Dinosaur oh, expert. Well, I like fitness. I like discipline. I love being no one, gentleman. No one like discipline, and, um, you fucking nonce. If I could hold a gun and shoot a gun, that would be pretty cool. You're like a fucking man now, don't you, Joe? Yes, Corporal. One of them fucking curly locks. You just see civilians, to be fair. You just, you, they don't have a clue. They really don't have a clue. They turn up there trying to be pally pally. And they're yeah, you're right, mate, and all that. And you're just like, you haven't got a clue. But you can't drop the hammer on them straight away at the train station. There you For go. Me, it's good to see they've turned up to try and give it a go, you know? When they first turn up, yeah, they're just a shell, I mean. They're not what you want, they're not reacting to how you react. But you can't expect that on day one, you know, you've got, you've got plenty of time to turn them into what you want to turn them into. Week two of 28. Your first week is basically After like orientation, days, how to march, get your kit, sort your kit out, how to iron, how to wash yourself, To begin sort of the stuff. very basics of being a paratrooper. We had something like this. It was like one night, and it was snowing as well. I joined in November. We may not have. And it was um, best. It was it was an overnight stay, pretty chilled out, just basics of field craft, how to cam up, how to do your basher and your bivvy up and all that sort of stuff. Soldier. However, we think we do. You ask a para to climb up a mountain, and he may not have done it before, but he'll believe that he can do it. And it is that pure confidence in our Pure confidence also relates or translates to if you meet a group of paras, typically they're knobheads. And, I, and I'm not slating them because they do a great job and they're great at what they do. It's just they have this arrogance about them, which is fine. You need it in that kind of role. In the infantry and in the airborne infantry, you need to be a big boy. <laughs> you need to be cocksure and confident. You need to believe from the start whatever you're doing you can do you can put your mind to it so there's i'm not slating them but typically a group of paras and obeds but all individually off great people i'm trying not to swear sorry in ourselves that means we do well in everything we do right joe okay welcome to interact one okay this is your first exercise or first lesson that's been taught out in the field what we're going to move on today is methods of movement so that's you moving across a battle space at the best speed possible everyone understand I think that? with all the new vertis yeah. stuff okay. vertis helmets and shit shows you now you need to do this with purpose joe you need to move as fast as you fucking can okay so once he gets down he's gonna get nice and low see how low he gets and how he moves with purpose Think about it, creeping up on the enemy, knowing they've been shooting at you and your friends, and you're going to post a grenade straight into him. That grenade is going to blow up, it blow him to pieces, and then you're going to come over the top and start shooting him. Best feeling in the world, Joe. That is where we're going. That is what you should want to be doing. That is the end product, Joe. Do you understand? Yes, go, bro! Good. So this, is, this is somewhat about when people say you get conditioned in the military. Like, I'm not slating it. It's just it's part of the system, and it's part of what you gotta do and what you're there for but this is what they're on about they're telling you from the start you are there as a paratrooper or a, a joe paratrooper to kill people you're not there to to get a kiss and a cuddle you're there to do a very specific job let's go get fucking moving good work if you were some soft leftist you'd probably be like oh my god that's too harsh whatever to but you know my father and my mother brought me up with an iron fist Right. I had corporal punishment. They always told me man is maker than man. You want to win, Joe. You want to be first. Paratroopers are always first, Joe. Who the fuck is this guy? My father gave me three options that were I was able to do without any problems, which was, of course, South African Army, French Foreign Legion, or the British Army. Get with your section commander. Get out of the front. Let's go. Get fucking moving. I feel already like he's going to fail. Time and he's going to leave. The military. The first time I was when I was 17. I left a few years after that. I, I miss the military life and, and the job itself. And at Good my age you, now, I want to go all out. I mean, I think it's, it's the last hurrah for me at my age now. 
this is my last chance to be something. I wonder where some of these this are at this, first time away from this home. point. I've lived a sheltered life. I've had mum do my laundry, dad give me money. It's a transition from, you know, being a kid, now turning into a man. The environments that we work in, Joe, okay? We don't patrol down nice, straight pavements, okay? It's always on this shit, undulating terrain. That means bumpy ground, etc. okay? Look at me when I'm fucking speaking. Stop looking at the ground. Some of you are just mincing. You're here to take the money and fuck off. That is it's it. Good point. You gotta be Get there for a reason. About your job. You're not in the fucking civilian world. You're in the fucking army now. That is it. The platoon of 40 recruits is attempting to join the Paras. Seen as the elite of the British Army, only a handful will succeed. So this is our office, this is where we do business. You get them out here and it's time to go to work. So this is where you earn your money. So you come out here and this is where you train to be a soldier. You don't train in camp to be a soldier. You train out here to be a soldier. It's a fair point. Right, Joe, at no point the other day, did I say it was a fucking picnic, did I? Okay, it is no good having rations everywhere because if the worst happens and you get contacted by yeah, the enemy, always square your kit you away. need to get the fuck out of here or we need to fight. Your not saying that I wasted it. To go. Happy? Yes, yes. Right, come on, start sparking. Start they sparking, also yeah. like your parents because you do something wrong, they'll teach you a lesson. If you do something right, they'll reward you. Um, they give you all the knowledge that you need and they will, they're there every step of the way, even if it seems like fucking arseholes. Pick the fucking Sometimes it does feel very thing. personal, but it's not. Yeah, I don't, I haven't gotten caught, but... Of course you haven't. Get that shit away, hurry up. Just little things that you don't think you're gonna get told off for, like leaving your weapon there. You thought it was boy, yeah, but they want your claws on your lap. Fucking too right. It's just a ball, like when you're trying to cook and you got a weapon on your lap. Just... Yeah. How are you two getting on? You're hexy cooker. Ugh. Have you stuck your phone to me, Avery? We're not fucking getting it, are we? We cannot be their best friend through training. We almost encourage this See, they're not in, mentality of us and them. They're not in the herringbone position. They're not in a, uh, sorry, not a herringbone position. What am I on about? They're not in a harbour position, doing a like hard routine or anything like that, because it is their first exercise. So what they're doing is very chill. Um, obviously under technical, technical? I can't get my words out today. Under a te tactical situation you would be in a harbour you'd have three points it'd be a triangle you'd be deep in some woods you'd have stags out whatever else um but at this point they don't need to do that it's just introduction between joe and the training team because it binds them together as a group it gives you a mutual enemy this sort of enemy if you like in inverted commas that they can work against um clearly that's you know, not the case, but in some some respects, we, we sort of encourage that. Do you think we're friends, Avery? Do you think we're friends? No, What is that doing out? You don't need any shit out, fucking throw it away. Chicken and black bean sauce. <laughs> Everything I had was burger and beans, sausage and beans, something and beans. Towards the end, we started getting better rat packs. The recruits are on their first night exercise and need to avoid being captured by the corporals. That little mice, you can hear them just scurrying around. We need a lot of basic soldiering skills, staying unseen, cover ground tactically. Only then, when we have those basics done well, can we start to Where's look at things like attacking? It would be akin to building a house. You need to lay the foundations first, and then you start to build up. Back up to the top. I knew your bell end. <laughs> I've just had a joke. Yeah, crawl through a ditch. It's up to his eyeballs. I showed some commitment. I'm not willing to go in there at this stage. I would have poked around this, and I'll catch him on the other side. He's, he's in it anyway. Who's that there, Joe? 
Latham, I've just gone up to my fucking tits in water to catch you. Let's go, bro. Fucking hell. He's not sure if that's going to be a bollocking or not, though. I didn't know you were there, Corporal. You didn't know anything, did you? Yeah? If you'd stay perfectly still, I want to come over. Okay? Because I can't see you in a bush. I can What's just going on his cam cream? Right, off you go back to the beginning. So you weren't mad at him because he's actually giving him props for how well he's done. The platoon have taken turns to be on lookout throughout the night. The temperature has plummeted to minus 10. I'm not used to this temperature at all. Never was. It took me a long time to get used to it, but... Just uh, FYI, just FYI, oh, that's a bad time to freeze, FYI, um, that camera blaring light straight into your face is going to suck, it takes hours, from half an hour to hours really to, to get your night vision and then days of living that like sort of routine to get good night vision and he's got a big LED light in his face so that's going to suck so bad um, and secondly when we did our uh, first like exercise and that. it was about the same conditions as this but obviously I was in DPM kit in a few years before this and it got so cold and I was so tired that I had to I stagged on and I didn't realize I, f I thought the other stag would come and get me he would wake up and come and get me but it was my job to go wake him up so I was I was on stag for like six hours in the freezing cold and I was like hallucinating and everything and anyway let's, I digress almost go warm so because you, you're shivering so much you just go warm but then it's, it's your face mainly that the wind just blows and then cuts through your face i want to be a parachute pot if i need to go through this i will go through it go on lad some of you now will be thinking although you won't admit it to me but in your head some of you will be thinking i don't think this is for me i don't like exercise it's too cold okay in your head now Think of a goal, it's only going to get easier, yeah? Because the weather is going to be the main thing that makes you suffer on exercise, right? Don't let it affect you when it is getting cold, because that's when you start getting bollockings and things like that off the section commander. Great job, great talk. Just don't let it affect you. Sweet. Yeah, fucking form cramped. Boom. Oh, the out there, Joe. Oh, mess 10 inspection. I learned a trick towards the end of basic training, which was clean it when it's hot. Sergeant's inspection, he will call out some items, we will then come round and check you. Everyone happy? This is just to show you can look after your stuff. Parts, He's had a nice MTP jacket on, didn't he? Stop nice and warm. See, look, they're all, the lads, the lads are all in nice, thin jackets and shirts and t-shirts, right? That's all they've got on. Some have got gloves, some haven't, whatever. But, um... All they've got on is a thin layer of MTP. That shirt material, that jacket that he's wearing, this lad on the right, the Joe, is a very thin jacket. There's no thermal insulation on that at all. The the lads, the, the DS uh, full screws, have all got insulated, warmed jackets, um, which is why they don't look cold, but the lads uh, on training are, or do. Shut up. Happy place, cold job. Culture. Um, uh, what was you about to say? Jumping out of planes? Oh. You ever jumped out of a plane? So where's your fucking happy place? I don't know, Gil. They look at you. They're trying to figure out who is this Joe? What's about him? Why is he here? You know, is he worth my time? Fucking give the weapon a weapon to wipe down, all right? Because he's been snowing and shit. He can tell he's part. suffering. He's not giving it. <laughs> you know, the training team, they're, they're amazing because the, top, the fact that they're invested into trying to make you become one of them it, it says a lot why is that not full they told me it was full weapon above your head get your weapon above your head what do you mean they told me it was full it's your fucking water bottle get your weapon above your head don't fucking mint get there stop fucking mincing joe get sprinting i want to be the grey man no, no one wants to be the grey man. The grey man basically means going under the radar, not being known to the corporal. No one sergeant. wants to be the grey man. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. If so you're joining the military, don't do that. Get moving, you. Get fucking moving. 
You just want to be average. They don't know me as someone they'll call. So I'll still go to like Corporal Duncan and he'll still be like, who are you? Like, he doesn't actually know my name, but obviously the other corals do, but it's only so much of a crime man you can be in training. Never works out, because you get forgotten. Right, put your fucking body armour the right way around. That like, is inside out. I don't know how you managed to do that. Go on, get a grip of yourself. The ECBA that they're wearing, the body armour, is, uh, is actually quite a good um, body warmer. I, I'm so... You know, it's just. But it should be underneath, not, there, not on top. It's like I'm, I'm in the cold. Underneath a jacket. That might change, but I used to always put mine underneath. It's just I, I, I'm thinking ahead of myself because the only thing I'm thinking about is that maroon beret. You know, that going on my head and me jumping out of a plane. You will learn the hard way, Joe. Right, I'm going to leave it there, and the reason I'm going to leave it there is actually because. Uh, I'm looking to collaborate with guys like, uh, oh, oh, there we go. Uh, let me double check. I've got a list. I've got a group chat going on with all the boys. I've got Craig Holman. Uh, you may know him. He's a good guy. King Slough. Who else have we got in this list? Uh, we've got One-Eyed Harry, Alex Harrison. We've got Noob Sandshrew, King Slough, uh, Lee Veteran. If you want me to collaborate and continue doing this as a series, get me at least seven likes and we will do another video. We'll do a part two, I'll continue this on and we'll do a series. I think it's a six part series, a seven part series. So let me know. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's something chilled, uh, just a chat and a, a react. So take care guys. God bless. Goodbye.